Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. Today's video is about the whimsical villainy, the neutral evil alignment, how to play it, what it is, and why you would really want to be Cersei Lannister or Darth Sidious, and how to incorporate them into your games. So, first and foremost, what we need to jump into right off the bat is what exactly is neutral evil? What is it? It shares a common ground with the other evil alignments because it incorporates a value of the self and how to advance that best through its own personal means. It shares this violent nature that is kind of coherent with all the other evil alignments because there's a lack of appreciation for the mortal conditions. Anything that can be living can be a problem, so you kind of just want to erase the problem rather than deal with it in an amicable way. So, being neutral evil you have this wonderful whimsical ability to dance between law and chaos so you can be lawful from time to time and you can be chaotic whenever you want it's this freedom that almost makes you a natural person because most of us in life are neutral uh whether we're good or not um we all break laws when we feel like and uphold them when we feel like whatever is really opportunistic everyone's probably broken a few laws let's not pretend that we haven't that is very, that's one of the things that makes playing neutral characters very at home and very, very uh, familiar because you can do those things. Neutral evil has this ability because of how it's structured. Um, you can be almost a backseat villain because you can follow uh, deities that are evil or kings that are evil. And just by adhering to their commands and, and following their wills, you could be committing evil acts, again, ultimately for your own personal advancement, but that would make you neutral evil. So it's a great class for evil clerics, warlocks, things of that nature that owe their power to something else. So what's important to think about when you're thinking about what neutral evil is, is an incredible freedom that comes with that character. Where lawful, you are bound to a code. Chaos, you are kind of almost restricted into needing to tear down organizations. Um, so, why would you want to be Cersei Lannister or Darth Sidious? Well, these kinds of characters have this great grounding, almost linear focus on what this alignment is. They are totally focused on what matters most to them. In, in the case of Senator Palpatine or Darth Sidious, it is power. He creates the Empire. He destroys this, the, the Jedi, almost eradicates them completely, and always meddles with the powers of the Force to try and consolidate it in a very unique way. But his only focus is himself. Everything else doesn't matter. He doesn't care about the law of the Empire, but he doesn't care about, really, the laws of the Sith, because the only things that he keeps in contact are the things that are going to continue to give him power. He makes an apprentice because it helps him get a, a funnel of power that keeps him on top. He creates the Empire because it focuses the entire galaxy's power directly into the palm of his hands. And he uses that to feed whatever whims he wants. Cersei Lannister does this incredible job of only focusing on herself and her children. So she does have these, you know, she's married, she's she's in love with her brother, and it's a whole horrible mess. But the one thing you can guarantee was she was going to look out for herself. She was going to break whatever promises she made. She was going to lie and cheat whenever it benefit her. And she'll kill anyone that got in her way and do horrible things in order to maintain her power. The reason why the mountain is an undead creature by the end of the series is because it would benefit her her to have him and he becomes her guard like it's incredible what extents she's willing to go to to obtain power to sustain it and to keep the things that she thinks is are important on top and she does a wonderful job of just focusing on that and letting everything else not matter and that ability to do that is very cool when you're playing characters with some sort of power it's a very cool concept to to just focus purely on what you want. If you made your party the most important thing to you, and you just kept tearing it down like worlds around you, that is a very, very interesting character concept that produces this great dynamic within your party. It's a very cool thing that you can work on, you can try and do. Very charismatic people tend to be neutral evil, 
because you need to be able to play both sides and you can do that best by being very favored by other people that aren't in your party, by NPCs, by other powerful characters you meet along the way. So now we're going to get into a little bit about what playing neutral evil is in a group context and how to do that without being a problem for your party. So how do you play a neutral evil character in a group that might not consist of other evil characters or in a campaign that's not geared towards evil characters? Well, first and foremost, we have to go through a list of things that you probably shouldn't do. First and foremost on that list is don't go rampant causing mayhem. It is not necessary most of the time and is very disruptive. You want to be able to have your party walk in town with you and not have them basically put you in handcuffs so you don't murder the apple cart lady. You want to be able to see the bigger picture. And I talk about this in a previous video and it'll probably come up a couple of times. You have to be able to weigh the consequences to your actions because you understand you can get into trouble for doing things in a bad spot. Take it up the opportunity in quests and in, op and in requests from other people to give in to those violent urges that your character might have or give in to that greed. That is the perfect outlet for that. There's a lot of leeway you gain from that because you're now fighting the enemy. Oh, bandits attacked. You know what? I haven't killed anything in a while. Let's go after those bandits and be merciless when you get there. Treat them with such savagery that it makes people go, whoa, you're going a little too far and you can have fun with that because they're the enemy and your group is already set to stop them. You want to take opportunistic chances like that because that's how you advance yourself. You defeat the bandits, you come back, you're just regaling yourself in how victorious you were and what you've done and now the people love you. You did an evil thing, you did it for a great reason, and you got ultimately what a neutral evil person wants, glory, greed, power, because now you're favored. Those kinds of things matter. You can use those quests and opportunities to do that. Downtime in quests and downtime from quests or RP moments are where your alignment is really going to shine and where your ambitions can grow. And that's the really foundations of making a character is to get those moments where you can do that. Um, so you want to limit when you burst out into violent action, sometimes you're in a situation where your character really would do that in the middle of a conversation that's not necessarily supposed to go that way. But every now and again, it happens. It can be great. It depends on how you handle it. And you want to be smart about re-understanding the consequences. Um, one of the other great things about being neutral evil, and this is the only alignment that gets to do that, and I mentioned this before, and this is the backseat villainy. So you're a warlock who made a pact with a fiend. And this fiend wants you to cause mayhem. It wants you to take lives and do whatever it is. You're doing this throughout the game. As you progress, you get these moments to char characterize yourself and, and get involved in the story and bring those things to light. And you, if you work with your DM a little to maybe let you take the reins of the, of the patron, you can now give your character an opportunity to act on their behalf and force your character in these scenarios. And then you get this nice little safety net, so when the party goes, why would you do that? Why would, look, you you did this horrible thing. You can reveal your obligation and share more of your story, more of your character's um, backstory and who he really is. And you get this wonderful RP moment where you get to see these people that are, are your, you know, your friends, but they're your adventurers, and they kind of get this moment where it's like, you know, you've, you've saved us before and we need you to survive, but you have to do these things and, and we feel for you and you get that sympathy from them and you can really work that into your character. Maybe you can use that to kind of give your character a reason to care for other party members or, or go forward with things like that, or at least build a better understanding or connection with them. So you get this wonderful opportunity. It works well with, um, any other classes because you can always have something that really belongs to you that really matters to you like say you are in love with another character who's made a pact and you're trying to convince the devil to release her from that pact in order to give you 
in order to switch souls so she can be free because she did it for the wrong reasons. And maybe you're just a fighter that does that. Like you can you can incorporate these things greatly into your character, but you want to make sure to fundamentally build them during character creation. You want to think really hard about why you're neutral evil or why evil isn't is part of what you're doing. Um, so you also want to learn not to sell out your party and being neutral evil and breaking promises and making you know allegiances just for the moment and then breaking them at the first opportunity you get is not going to be something that you want to reflect with your party keep them safe keep them don't steal from them keep them happy you keep them growing and getting stronger you want that because you want to believe that they're going to be there for you when you need them or to defend you in case someone else catches on to what you're doing um so incorporating those things is really what's going to be important about making your character evil and not a problem. Make sure you talk to your DM about some of the things you're going to do, especially if you know in advance some of the things that you want to do. And just to make sure it doesn't toss a huge wrench into what the DM is planning, because again, he has to have some fun as well. Before we get on to our final topic, just want to ask you if you guys enjoyed the content, please like, share, subscribe, and let us know what you're thinking, stuff you want us to cover. Finally, we're going to talk about when you're making a character, a character creation, how to incorporate concepts that really work well with neutral evil. Um, one of the great things about being neutral evil is if you have a really dark, edgy background, it fits in very well. Because you might have a kind soul deep down somewhere, you might want to make that allusion to that. You can still incorporate neutral evil as being part of this thing that was part of your upbringing that you follow because it's the only way you know how to assess power and how to gain and how to get what you want, whatever greed or hedonistic thing you're chasing after. Chase after something is always important because you want an adventure or you want someone that's gonna need to go out into the world and conquer something. Maybe it's a, an issue with the self or it's vengeance or, or, or it's greed or it's power or it's the lack thereof having it your whole life and seeing the rest of the world is so beneath you that you think you deserve it. Um, Again, feel free to div dive into different character classes that you wouldn't normally play because you can incorporate those kinds of things very, very easily and make a cool ranger character or whatever it is that you haven't played before, but you wanted to give it a cool chance, you know, or, or try something new ideas or races that you haven't seen before. Uh, the races with the more uh, darker backgrounds, it's so much easier to incorporate those things because you can just be slightly less lawful than some of them are or, or slightly less chaotic than some of them are but that their backgrounds help breed this great situation where you can see this is what they are i can help bring that to the forefront and maybe that'll help cover up what i'm trying to do um again thank you all for listening Please always talk to your DM when talking about playing evil characters because it's important that you guys get on the same page and that you guys don't cross beams or, or get into trouble that you can't really dig yourself out of. Also, talk to your party members, your friends in real life. Let them know what you're trying to do. Let them know so everyone can have this great, wonderful time together. And that's what's really important. Thanks for giving a spooky kid a chance. Uh, we'll hope to see you again soon.